Jeopardy! Host Ken Jennings has been accused of letting a partially correct response fly on Wednesday's episode. Deb Bilodo guessed a clue for Zoe Deschanel with who is Deschanel and was not prompted to be more specific as expected. Returning champ Deb Bilodo, a winemaker from California, faced Ben Spilsbury, a sales engineer from Long Island City, New York, and Devin Lohman, an architectural designer and master's student from Peachtree City, Georgia. The clue read, in the 60s Marlo Thomas was that girl, from 2011 to 2018, she played new girl, Jess. Deb, who wound up losing the game, simply responded, who is, De Chanel and was rewarded the points by Ken, 48. FNS across the internet expressed disagreement with the breezy jeopardy. Ruling in Ken's lack of asking for clarity as there is more than one actress in the De Chanel family. Expected Ken to ask for clarification. One Twitter user wrote, Emily De Chanel will be filing a strongly worded protest with hashtag Jeopardy regarding Ken's failure to prompt be more specific on the new girl clue. Shouldn't they require a, be more, specific on De Chanel since there are, other, current acting options? Hashtag Jeopardy, wrote another. I thought the same thing. Fully expected Ken to ask for clarification and was very surprised when he didn't, replied a third. On Reddit, another fan similarly penned, a little surprised they didn't throw a be more specific on De Chanel, since Zoe's sister and mother are also actresses. Absolutely, especially when I never heard of the correct response one, wrote another. A fifth fan also agreed, Zoe De Chanel probably has a higher fame level than her elder sister Emily, but Emily was the star of a show that ran for 12 years. This may be the moment that finally convinced me that Be More Specific has been permanently retired as a concept. The widely understood rule is that if a last name only refers to one person, the first name isn't needed but if there is more than one person the clue could possibly be for it is needed. A Reddit user put it, sometimes first slash middle names are necessary for clarification. For example in a question about US presidents, who is Obama is usually enough information to know you mean Barack Obama but who is Bush is not enough information to know whether you mean George W. Bush or George H. W. Bush. If the first name is not necessary for clarification, people may omit it because 1. It's faster than saying the full name and or 2. It's easier to remember just the last name. Questionable. Ken and actress Mayim Bialik, 47, succeeded the late, great Alex Trebek, who had hosted since 1984. The hosting announcement hasn't been the only big change for Jeopardy, as executive producer Michael Davies, who replaced the ousted Mike Richards, filled a job that before them, hadn't changed hands in decades either. While Davies has been focused on the upcoming Jeopardy! Masters, the microscopes are out for traditionalists, and they've spotted plenty of rulings they haven't liked in the regularly airing show. Earlier this week fans disagreed with a rhyming clue that asked for sake and jokey, Ken told a Twitter critic to buy a dictionary. Ken was also recently accused of being more lenient with eight-day champ Stephen Webb than another contestant. Stephen responded, is that the corpse blossom, what's the corpse blossom, corpse flower? And Ken decided after a slightly generous number of tries he was correct. Later on, in the same episode, rival Karen Rittenbach buzzed in and responded, What's Cat's Cradle? No, Ken said. She then, like Stephen, tried correcting herself, what is, Cat's in the Cradle? One viewer tweeted, what's up with Ken Jennings, being, so quick with the no for Karen, but Stephen gets three tries for the correct answer, and another, that was crappy. He let Stephen answer 50x. Another contestant was deemed incorrect in his pronunciation of the word Gethsemane in March he was docked $1,600 and the $3,200 swing proved costly when he was the only one correct in Final Jeopardy but still lost. Yet in another March game, then-champ Melissa Clapper was allowed to guess what sounded like Ewan Gregor instead of McGregor. For over 60 years, Jeopardy! has remained a pillar of American television, captivating audiences with its quick-witted format and rigorous standards of trivia. But recently, the show faced unexpected drama when a decision by host Ken Jennings raised eyebrows and fueled heated debates among fans. 
The controversy erupted after Jennings awarded points to a contestant for a partial response, a ruling that many viewers argue went against the game's long-standing rules. This incident has sparked a wave of accusations about incorrect rulings and calls for clarification from both fans and past champions. The incident The controversy began during a tense final round of the game, when contestant Sarah Thompson, a 26-year-old software engineer from Ohio, buzzed in with what was thought to be a half-answer. The category was famous historical figures, and the clue read, this man is credited with the invention of the telephone and famously had a strained relationship with his assistant, Thomas Watson. Thompson immediately rang in and said, who is Alexander Graham Bell? However, just as she spoke, her voice wavered, and she seemed unsure. She continued, uh, or maybe it's Thomas Edison. Jennings, without missing a beat, smiled and replied, that's correct. Alexander Graham Bell. The audience's initial reaction was one of confusion, as the format of Jeopardy! has long been known for its strict policy, contestants must provide a precise and complete response to earn credit for an answer. Partial answers have historically been penalized, with players losing money for what are considered incomplete responses. This was the case for a contestant several weeks prior, who, after giving a close but no cigar response, was not awarded points. In the past, even minor errors, like mispronunciations or slight misinterpretations of a clue, have cost contestants their earnings. So, why was this situation different? The outcry. As soon as the episode aired, Jeopardy! Fans flooded social media platforms like Twitter and Reddit, accusing Ken Jennings of making an incorrect ruling. The controversy centered on his decision to award points to Thompson despite her failure to provide a definitive answer. Fans argued that by giving her credit for a partial response, in this case, naming Bell but also suggesting Edison, who wasn't the correct answer, Jennings was undermining the integrity of the game. A common criticism was that Jeopardy! has built its reputation on requiring contestants to be precise and accurate. It's about knowledge and timing, one fan tweeted. You either know the answer or you don't. Jennings giving her points for that was just wrong. Others pointed to past instances where contestants had been penalized for slightly ambiguous answers, even when they demonstrated significant knowledge. It sets a dangerous precedent, said another fan. If you let one person get away with a fuzzy answer, what happens next? The backlash didn't stop there. Former Jeopardy! Champions chimed in, voicing their concerns over the ruling. Brad Rutter, the show's all-time money winner, tweeted, I've had my fair share of tough calls, 